The iPhone 11 starts at $700, but last year's iPhone XR is at least $100 cheaper. So let's work out if you need to spend more or less. So what do you get for that extra $100 if you choose the iPhone 11? Because on paper, it doesn't look like all that much. So first up, you get an extra camera and ultra wide angle lens around the back compared to the single wide angle on the 10R. You get the addition of night mode for clearer night photography. You get a more battery life, basically an hour extra than you do on the 10R and a new processor, the A13 Bionic over last year's A12. So let's break down if there's actually more differences than that and see which one is right for you. Let's start with the design and the display because on the outside, at least, these phones look really, really similar. Apart from the extra ultra wide angle lens on the back of the 11, they really could pass for identical twins. I honestly can't tell which one is which unless I look at the back of them. So yes, 6.1 inch LCD display. It is Apple's liquid retina display. And when I look at them both side by side, I don't see that much of a difference at all. They're all identical in terms of the contrast ratio, the pixels per inch, the brightness. I have to say though, because I've been really, really closely comparing them, I've noticed that the 11 display is just a little bit more punchy than the 10R. The blacks are a little bit deeper. The colors are just a tiny bit more vibrant. Then again, that 10R is at least a year old now. So maybe there has been a little bit of natural degradation of the display. Anyway, long story short, I don't think you will notice much difference at all in the displays unless you are very close looking at them side by side like me. So I don't think the display is gonna be the big deal breaker for you at all. At the top of the screen, you will notice there is a notch on both of the phones. The rest of the design of the handset, well, yes, they both use aluminum or aluminum frames. It is also a glass back and front, and the 11 is supposed to be tougher than the iPhone XR. I have done a drop test and yeah, this is a pretty tough phone indeed, but I dropped it on hard concrete. I didn't drop it outside on the sidewalk on anything jagged. So with all drop tests, your results may vary. Please put a case on it. The iPhone 11 is slightly more water resistant than last year's phone. It is rated IP68, which means it can go down to two meters for 30 minutes, as opposed to the 10R, which is IP67. That is one meter for 30 minutes. I did my own water test on last year's 10R and found that it can go down almost eight times its rated limit, which was crazy. The 11, I haven't yet tested myself, but I am expecting good things from that. So stay tuned for the water test. But again, I don't recommend you dunk these longer than Apple says, because there's no guarantees what happens. The iPhone 11 also has two new color finishes. You get this lilac and the green option as well, whereas the iPhone XR has the blue, like you can see here, and the coral finish. Every other color though is the same between the two. Let's talk my favorite part of any phone review, which is the cameras. So just a quick note on the actual hardware. The iPhone XR has a single wide angle lens at f1.8. The iPhone 11 also has that single wide angle lens at f1.8 and the addition of an ultra wide angle lens at f2.4. Both of these phones on all of the cameras are 12 megapixels. So I've done a lot of test photos between the iPhone 11 and iPhone XR in a lot of different situations. And I have to say, I can't really tell that much of a difference between them when you are looking at nice, well-lit shots with a lot of daylight. It's just like, it's really hard to pin them apart, especially when you're only looking at them at a reduced magnification or on the phone screens themselves. When you zoom in a little closer at full resolution, you will see that the iPhone 11 is just a tad sharper overall than the iPhone XR. And there is a slight improvement in dynamic range in only a certain number of situations. Not every photo you'll see it, but ones with a strong contrast between light and dark areas, you will definitely notice a tiny bit of an improvement there. The difference between the ultra wide and the wide angle lens on the 11 is actually pretty good. And what I mean by that is 
is that the exposure is pretty consistent between the two and the color profile is pretty much the same. Portrait mode is one of those things that you'll love and use all the time or you will never use it at all. But if you buy the iPhone 11, Portrait mode is now usable on pets and inanimate objects. So I didn't realize how many people wanted portrait mode for their pets until my Twitter was absolutely inundated when I posted about this feature being available on the iPhone 11. Of course, it's not new to the iPhone if you've had a dual lens iPhone in the past. It is just new to this range, the iPhone 11. The iPhone XR only lets you do regular portrait modes of people. So no other animals, no inanimate objects, just people on portrait mode on the XR, people, pets, and everything else on the 11. Night mode is a huge addition to the iPhone 11 and the XR does not have a night mode at all. So this is what shots look like side by side. I did a lot of comparisons to give you an idea of what night mode can do. Overall, the results can look really, really good. It definitely brightens the scene. You get a lot more of an idea of what is actually in the photo when you turn on night mode. Overall, the effect looks great. However, I did find that it only works best when you have, uh, I guess, a small light source in the photo. If it's totally pitch black, well, you're out of luck. It's just gonna look like a mushy, muddy mess. Yeah. When it comes to video, the story is pretty similar to how the still images story plays out. That is, they look very similar when you put them both side by side. You can switch back and forth between that regular wide angle lens and the ultra wide angle lens on the iPhone 11 during recording, which is kind of cool. It's pretty cinematic. I feel like a full on Steven Spielberg when I use it. However, when you are in the interface, if you've set your camera to record at 4K at 60 frames a second, you won't see that option to pull out to that wider lens. Here's a hot tip for you. You'll have to go into the settings and change the recording resolution to 4K 30 frames a second to be able to do that. Just kind of a bummer. I wish you could do it on 4K 60, but hey, we can't have it all. For stabilization, I think that the iPhone 11 has definitely improved slightly over the XR, especially if you can see something like this side-by-side -side walking shot. The 11 just looks a little bit smoother. The only catch is that you won't be able to get OIS on that ultra wide angle lens on the iPhone 11 for photos or videos. So just bear that in mind if you are thinking of filming on that ultra wide lens. The camera interface itself also looks a little bit different between the 11 and the 10R. Even though both of these phones are running iOS 13, there's a different font. You can do a quick take video just by pressing and holding the shutter button down when you're in photo mode. And yeah, it looks slightly different, but is that worth $100 to you? I don't think it is to me. I like the way that it looks on the 11, but it's not a deal breaker. Let's talk selfies because, of course, both of these phones could do it thanks to the true depth camera at the front. The differences are in resolution 7 megapixels on the iPhone XR versus 12 on the iPhone 11. You also get the option of being able to pull out a little bit wider on the selfie camera on the iPhone 11 compared to just the regular field of view on the XR. You also get the addition of 4K video recording at 60 frames a second on the newer phone. Plus, the thing that everyone's talking about that I don't want to admit that I tried or I don't want to talk about it at all, but I have to because it's part of the feature set. It's called Slowfies. Yeah, okay, whatever. Whatever you think of the name, slow motion selfie video is a thing. You can do it on the brand new phone. You can't on last year's 10R. This is what it looks like. I don't know, it's kind of cool for some applications, but I just can't get over the fact that I just feel so silly every time I try and do something with that slofy mode. Slofies aside, I think that there is a significant improvement in the selfie camera on the iPhone 11 compared to last year's 10R. I didn't really have a problem with the old phone at all, but I definitely think that the images from the newer phone just look a little bit sharper and just have a bit of a better look overall than the older device. Maybe you won't notice too much if you're not comparing them side by side, but that's the whole point of this video. I am comparing them side by side. My opinion is the 11 is slightly better. Now we come to everything else in these phones, which comes down to performance, other features, and battery life. So 
As I mentioned off the top, a new chip in the iPhone 11 A13 Bionic over last year's A12. Now the A12 was an absolute beast and I never had any issues with running any apps whatsoever. The A13, I don't think I've used it long enough to notice if there is a significant improvement over the iPhone XR in terms of day-to-day -day tasks. I don't feel like there is in terms of opening apps or editing video, anything like that. But I think the real proof will come the more I use it and the more resource intensive apps that I do start to use, I think then I will see an improvement. But where I have seen a significant improvement is battery life. Now the 10R always has been a beast that can last 16 hours non-stop, full on video playback with the screen on. The iPhone 11 is, yes, it's still like that. And then some more, it lasts me the whole day and then some. I don't have to worry about charging this as often as I would any of the other iPhones from previous generations, so I really appreciate that. I think the speakers on the iPhone 11 are a tiny bit louder than on the iPhone XR, and you get the addition of Dolby Atmos support. I did a side-by-side -side listen test. I wasn't blown away by the sound from either of the phones, but I definitely thought there was an improvement in the audio on the 11 over the 10R. Again, I don't think you're ever gonna notice unless you and a friend have them side by side, but I don't think it's a significant enough upgrade. Some other insider bits and pieces to talk about is Gigabit LTE. The iPhone 11 has it, the iPhone XR doesn't. Essentially, it's kind of that bridge between 4G and 5G. It will give you a little bit faster LTE where available. You also get Wi-Fi 6, Again, I don't know if that's worth the upgrade to you. It's nice to have it and it's definitely there for future proofing purposes. But if you are not that into your internals, I don't think you're gonna notice. Now capacity, this is an important thing because when you run out of space, you can't add any external storage to it. So the base models for both of these phones start at 64 gigabytes then 128 and if you want 256 that's only going to be available now on the iPhone 11. The iPhone XR did used to come in that capacity but it's no longer available from Apple's website so if you do want that maybe you could find a new version somewhere on a carrier or even second hand if that's the capacity that you want on the older phone. Let's check the specs. Both have a 6.1 inch liquid retina display. The 10R has a 12 megapixel wide angle camera, whereas the 11 has a 12 megapixel wide angle camera and a 12 megapixel ultra wide angle camera with night mode. The 10R has a seven megapixel true depth camera with 1080p video. The 11 has a 12 megapixel true depth camera with 4K video. Both use Face ID. The 10R has an A12 Bionic chip and the 11 has an A13 Bionic chip. The iPhone 10R is in 64 or 128 gigabytes of storage whereas the 11 has 64, 128 or 256 and both of them have the same experience with iOS 13. Now it comes down to which phone would I choose if I was spending my own money on one of these. So this is a tough one, as it always is, because it really does come down to, do you want the latest and greatest, or are you okay with last year's phone, which is just as good in many different ways. So really for me, I think I'm gonna be a cheapskate and choose last year's iPhone XR, unless I wanted that ultra wide angle lens camera and the benefit of having pet portrait mode on, on my phone and a slightly better battery. I don't think any of the other upgrades are enough to entice me and I'm a photographer so I was really expecting to be blown away by those camera improvements. I think they're great and if you do have the extra money to spend, yeah of course you'd get the iPhone 11 but I'm being cheap and I'm being on your side so I think that the iPhone XR is still a great phone, it's still available and it's cheaper, it does pretty much everything you need. Some of the features in the iPhone 11 aren't yet, I guess, fully fleshed out yet. So unless you want to be future-proofing yourself, this is a great option. I think I'm gonna choose the cheapie. Thanks so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the episode. And if you did, please come back very soon when I will be comparing the brand new Apple Watch Series 5 against this watch, the Fitbit Versa 2, to work out if you need to spend more or less.